All right, Shabbos say good morning. Let us begin. So we are Mirza Hashem, beginning a new os this morning in Sidka Satzadik. We are beginning os nun aleph. A really beautiful piece by the Rabbi. Actually, I just sent out the uh, the PDF in uh, in in the chat. So let's begin. We'll actually take a look at the Beuria Hasidus on page Kuf Chaf Aleph. When the Beuria Hasidus he writes as follows. Thank you. So let's let's analyze a little bit. So remember, the Rebbe over here now is beginning to discuss what I think is something incredibly, incredibly important. And the so that he's discussing over here is the battle against the Eight Sahara. So remember again, we, we've kind of been we, we've been building through this. We've been building up in the last sif. You know, the Rebbe took a little bit of, of a not a detour because it's all connected. But he went in a little bit of a different direction, discussing the concept of biita achishena. So now in in nun al, but beforehand, if you remember, he was talking about the power of one's koach and the struggles that one has in life and that how sometimes the greatest strength that you develop is a result of conquering your weakness. We all struggle with specific things and when I go ahead and find the koach to be able to overcome my weakness, that often becomes the very source of my strength. So the Rebbe now says over here something amazing. Any success I have, any success I have, let me let me let me translate this a little bit out of order. Bekoach anoshi b'shviras hayetzer hara milamale es chafetzo uritzono betavas haguf. So I'm saying, I, I have a particular desire, a particular taiva, and I fight against that taiva. I go ahead and literally I, I do battle against it, and I'm able to overcome that taiva. And the way I'm able to overcome it, ultimately again, is through hishtat lo sa'adam, through, through human effort. So I struggle with something, I struggle with a type, with a particular desire, and I work hard to overcome it. And I'm able to overcome it. I'm able to resist the temptation of sin, and I'm, and I'm able to do so literally through my own work, through my own resolve. Nick, listen, listen to this. Nikra v'nech shavlo hadavar be'ene ha'kodesh baruchu, Rak lechein viyofi bilvad. When Hakadosh Baruch Hu sees this, he says to himself, "Oh, that's very nice. That's very nice. Lechein viyofi bilvad. Chein kishein nitzchono shalim viyofi kishein nitzchono shalva in a muchlat." So again, in the introduction, which which I did not go into over here, the Rebbe discusses the pasuk from Mishlei Sheker Achein vehevel hayofi. But suffice it to say that chein and yofi refer to Things that are very nice, but not but not complete, not complete. So we'll say. So we're going to read these words, and at first glance, this makes absolutely no sense. So what the Reb is saying is, if I struggle with a particular desire, and I overcome it, how do I overcome it? I overcome it through my ability to work on myself to resist temptation. So the Reb says that's very nice. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's not complete. Not complete. Kimoshim avor la'alan, shumechuna b'shamayim, sheker hachein v'hevel hayofi. V'zemishum, so I don't understand what the Rebbe is describing over here. So just, just notice what the Rebbe just said. If I struggle with a particular desire, and I find the strength within myself to be able to overcome that desire, and I resist the temptation to sin, I resist the temptation to go ahead and give in to my wants and desires. The Rebbe says, that's very nice, but it's okay. It's okay. It's not great. What? Isn't what the Rebbe is describing over here, the pinnacle of human accomplishment, the ability to resist temptation, the ability to resist desire, the ability to go ahead and want to do something, but yet not give in, not do so, because, because I'm able to overcome that. It, again, that's the pinnacle of human accomplishment. And here, the Rebbe is describing that as something nice. So what's the pshat? I will say this is incredible. So why is it that he describes it as, she, remember, so Hevel and Yofi, or I should say what the Rebbe says, sorry, Chain and Yofi, refers to things that are nice, but are incomplete. 
So Sheker Achein Vehevel Hayofi, the Rebbe says, the Pasuk in Mishle, says, there are things in life that are nice, that are nice, but they're not all that great. So if I find the ability to overcome my desires through my own personal will, through my own personal, through my own personal strength, that's nice, but it's not great. <laughs> Why not? It's incomplete. Look at what he writes. V'zem Yishum Shebenitzachon Kazeh Ha'adam Eino Batuach Shiyihiye Lo Kiyum La'ad V'im Kein Eino Amiti V'kavua B'nafsho So listen to this. Because, l- let me, let me, let me go ahead and go to the end first and then I'll bring it back in. What the Rebbe is going to suggest is something dramatically amazing. That in life, in order to be successful in any particular endeavor, you must make Hashem your partner. And if you don't make the Ribbono Shal Olam your partner, by definition, even if you are quote-unquote successful, the effort is stunted. And even in working on myself, if I have a particular thing, I have a particular weakness, and I work on it, and I overcome it, but I think that the work is all me, and I don't rely on HaKadosh Baruch Hu's partnership, and I don't rely on the Ribbono Shalom to help me, and I don't realize that I can't be successful without him, that is a stunted effort. Even if it looks like I'm successful, the Rebbe says, it's Sheker HaChein Vehevel Hayofi. It's nice, but it's fundamentally incomplete. So let's, let's, I, I went ahead, let's see it now inside. He says as follows, Vezemishum, Shemenitzachon Kaza. When a person is successful with something in life, or, and, and this, this type of success, and this type of success that the Rebbe is describing is the type of success where you do it all on your own. You do not invite the Ribbono Shal Olam to be your partner. It's hard to say that it's going to endure. It's hard to say that a success that in which man does not invite God to be a partner in his endeavor is going to be a successful one. Listen to this, because we know the way it works. Page Kuf Chaf Aleph, left hand column. Ki hari hara, niskaber u mishadish al ha adam bechoyom. The Yet Sahara, I will say, you know, the, this, the, the interesting part, I mean, interesting, the challenging part of the Yet Sahara is I could work on my, you know, most things in life, if you practice and you reinforce and you work harder and harder and harder, you become better, more proficient, and the task becomes easier. Interestingly enough, the one thing that does not work that way in life is ruchnius. Is ruchnius. Because at the end of the day, you could try, and I could put in effort, and I could put in good effort, but a person never reaches the level where they say, okay, Baruch Hashem, now I've put in so much effort that the Yitzhahara has been neutralized. Right? There's nothing more. The only time the Yitzhahara is neutralized is when a person dies after 120. But the Rebbe is quoting the Gemara over here that the Yitzhahara is mishandish, is miskaber b'choyom. Every single day the Yitzhah goes, oh, so that's why sometimes we have these moments in life where we do something, we do something wrong, and I say to myself, I can't believe I did this. Right? I've been working so hard on myself, and I've been good for so long, and I have so many days of positive traction, I'm making so much, and now I did this, I did this, and then we look at it, I look in the mirror and I say, my gosh, it just seems so counterintuitive that I behaved this way, and it makes no logical sense. But that's because sometimes we approach the world of Ruchnius assuming that because I was good Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that of course Friday should be easy. But that's not the way the world of Ruchnius works. It's Yisro, it's Yitzro shall Adam Iskabra Allah Bechol Yom. The Yitzhahara, just because you just because you won on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday does not make Friday's battle any easier, any easier. Now the difference is now, once I overcome the HR a number of times, I know how it works. I know what my triggers are. I know what my weaknesses are. But at the end of the day, the battle is still the battle. And therefore the Rebbe says, yom echa also. But it's is very profound. If, if on one day, if on one day I'm able to overcome the Yitzhahara, adayin yeshlo lachshosh sha'al af hayom, Ulai machar lo I'll say, what, what, a, what a profound statement. 
just because I was successful today, I have to recognize that I may not be successful tomorrow. See, I was like, so th this is sometimes the great mistake we make in Ruchni, because like I said, like I said, in any other skill set in life, if I work hard, I build myself up, success today is a good indicator of success tomorrow. That's the way life works, right? Wh whatever it is, you fill in the blank, whatever skills you're building up in your career, if I have a successful day today, because I built a skill, I built a skill, chances are I'll be able to use that skill in a successful way tomorrow. That's just the way, right? Whatever the skill is, the one thing it doesn't work with is, is ruchnius. You could be, inc I could be incredibly successful today. I could have a great day and yet tomorrow, I could just make a dramatic mistake. And I, I think, I don't know, maybe not. I know it happens to me all the time. I think it happens to us and it's so upsetting. And, and it's so, it's so profoundly like, I, I'm so angry at myself. I can't believe I did this and I don't know where it comes from. I just came off of a great Shabbos. I just came off of an inspired moment. I just had this moment of Aliyah. Now, how am I doing this? How am I doing this? That's because Yitzro Shal Adam is Kabra Alav Bechol Yom. That's because the Yitzhahara is, of the, the, the internal struggle is unlike anything else in this world. You can be successful for years and then have a dramatic failure that comes out of, I mean, not comes out of nowhere, nothing comes out of nowhere. But again, we'll, so we'll have to stop over here for today. I'm going to pick up with this in Merit Hashem tomorrow, but you see where the Rebbe is going with this. That's why in order to be spiritually successful in life, one must bring HaKadosh Baruch Hu as a partner. And therefore, anything that is done, that a person thinks they do on their own, the Rebbe titles that as Sheker HaChein Vehevel HaYofi. I want to be clear. The Rebbe is not at all saying that the effort is not mine. Of course the effort is not mine. But the Rebbe is trying to paint a picture that by definition, any endeavor in life that only involves human effort is usually not going to endure. But any effort that, in, that, that is a synergistic partnership between me putting in my hishtadlus, but recognizing that my efforts are only blessed if the Ribbono Sha'olam is, is involved, that's something that has staying power. Will Amir Tashem see it inside tomorrow? We'll stop over here.